a large plume of sargasm could impact the Florida coast this spring. Meteorologist Robert Spetta has a look at what exactly sargasm is and what we can expect in 2024. Last year, a bloom of sargasm stretched 5,000 miles across the Atlantic and eventually piled up here along our Florida beaches. And this year, we could see another round of above average amounts of seaweed here on our coast. But first, let's answer the question, what exactly is the sargassum? So sargassum is a multicellular algae, which you would probably know as seaweed. Um, there's a few species of sargassum, um, but the one that we're most concerned about grows unattached to the seafloor um, and can multiply and divide by fragmentation, and it can cause these really big blooms. And with the warming climate and nutrients in the ocean, um, we seem to be getting more and more of this sargassum. So could this year be another record bloom? There have been reports that there is a really big bloom out in the middle of the Atlantic. No one is quite sure if it is going to come um, this far east and threaten the Caribbean and Florida again. I think that Florida beaches north of Jupiter are really going to have a problem because the Gulf Stream veers off there. And so up here in Jacksonville, the Gulf Stream is about 90 miles offshore, and it really keeps a lot of that um, sargassum from reaching our beaches. Here on our coast, it actually could be kind of a learning experience. But I like to pick it up, put it in a bucket of seawater, and you can see some of the creatures that come alive on there. Sometimes I'll see um, sargassum nudibranchs and other things. So I like to think of it as a fun educational opportunity more than what they have to deal with in South Florida or the Gulf or the Caribbean, which can be those massive buildups of rotting sargassum, releasing hydrogen sulfide, really problematic. Now, sargassum season does typically start in the spring when we get strong onshore winds. So if you see it out here in our local area beaches, just remember there are typically living things inside of it. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, First Coast News, on your side.